Alright guys, this is Nick Save with Prenny and I'm here with Think Computers. I'm going to go over the Mad Cat Strike 7 gaming keyboard configuration software. Um, the software doesn't ship with the keyboard itself. You have to go to the Mad Cat's website in order to download it. Um, it comes in two relatively decent sized files, uh, a driver file and the configuration software file. Whenever you do install uh, both of these files they will take a significant amount of time so if you think there's something wrong with the installation just give it some time it'll work its way out um, once you have it configured you just basically go to the taskbar uh, simple scroll down to your Mad Cat Strike 7 keyboard icon here which is pretty generic looking and you right click it and you can go into profile editor um, you get this smart technology thing that pops up on the screen, but eventually you get into the software itself. The software is broken down into four tabs. Um, the first tab that does absolutely nothing. It's just basically uh, a picture of the keyboard itself, a little nice welcome message for you, and an RSS feed to their website. Um, next tab would be programming. This, this tab is designed for the macro functionality that are built into the designated macro keys on the keyboard. Um, this is where you're you're going to spend the majority of your time if you actually do invest the money into this keyboard. Next is the launcher tab and this is actually set up for one specific screen on the TFT LCD where you can actually launch applications. This is typically what I leave my uh, keyboard on all the time unless I'm actually playing a game. Um, you can pretty much set it to any icon that you want to launch whatever application you want just by touching it on the screen. And lastly we have a support tab which is pretty much like the first tab it really doesn't offer much um, these are just links basically to the website itself and another RSS feed to the website um, but the two screens that I, I wanted to go over were the launcher which we'll go into first um, basically if I want to uh, add an application that it doesn't automatically find right here in the list which it's just gonna do a quick browse for you you can click browse for apps and then you know basically just go right down through your desktop and find everything that you're looking for or click wherever the launch application icon is for whatever particular application you want to launch simple as clicking an icon and then selecting it over here and you put whatever you want on whatever tile you want um, it's it's really really nice especially if if you change the frequency of whatever applications that you're using um, the 12 applications that I did have set up on here before I just clicked off on it um, were pretty much the applications that I use more than anything um, I don't actually keep icons on my desktop as you can see so the fact that I have a little launcher that has these application uh, launch ability to it uh, makes it really nice for me um, next I want to go into the programming tab and this is where I have spent a significant amount of time one because it's not the easiest thing in the world to figure out and two because it is the most robust function of the keyboard um, Mad Cats gives you the ability to actually download profiles gaming profiles application profiles you name it right to the strike 7 keyboard these profiles basically give you two functions one they macro the dedicated macro keys on the keyboard which as you can see here are the M two three four and um, the thumb wheel button palm rest button and also the C function buttons that are actually above the arrow keys but it also gives you the ability to macro the TFT LCD screen because there is a specific function in there for whatever application you want to set macros to um, the screen itself is really great because um, it gives you the ability to actually add up to 36 macros just on the screen, 12 per window view. Um, you select between the different window views by clicking the different mode buttons on the keyboard itself. That These are your mode buttons, 1, 2, and 3. And uh, it gives you the ability to really, you know, take a game or an application to the next level if you can't remember keystrokes or if you want the accessibility of something to be you know right there in front of you um, for the example that I want to use is I actually created um, basically a profile for the game Heroes of New Earth and um, it's it's uses a support functionality I just just set up one screen basically but I play support a lot 
and I wanted the ability to quick buy items without having to memorize where they were in the shop or, you know, the keyboard quick strokes or whatever you want to call them. Um, but I created uh, basically macros for certain items in the shop. Um, each one of these, you set them up, you know, just as simple as clicking here and then clicking new advanced command and it asks you, you know, what you want to press in here. And you can click that as a macro function or if you want to make them independent keystrokes, all that other wonderful stuff. Um, what's really cool about this is so you don't have to remember what's what, you know, what you macro to what specific button. It gives you the ability to edit each icon, which I actually created icons for each of uh, the buttons that, you know, I buy whatever item from what a particular shop. What's really nice about it is you can pretty much import any image that you want to utilize as an icon. I'm pretty sure it takes GIFs, PNGs, GIFs, uh, uh, JPEGs, bitmaps. I think I said GIFs twice. Well, regardless, um, it actually uses uh, an 80 pixel by 80 pixel image. Um, so if you do import something bigger, it's just going to scale it down to 80 by 80. So if it's something really detailed, it's going to look like crap. You might as well, if you're going to create icons, um, make them 80 by 80 because at least you'll know how they look on the TFT screen. Um, the software itself comes with a bunch of preloaded icons over here. These are all preloaded. Um, and it's just as simple as, you know, clicking whatever button you want to set, and you can set it to that particular uh, image. Um, I prefer the, the icons that I made because, one, I spent the time to make them, and two, they look a hell of a lot better. Um, you can have up to, like I said before, 36 different... Um, icons for you to sl click through uh, so you can spend some serious time configuring icons but I imagine as the community grows around the strike 7 um, and these profiles become more available to download uh, the icons and the functionalities behind them will be user generated to the point where you can pretty much search whatever game you want slash strike 7 and download a profile that already has the icons created for you um, I actually enjoyed making this Han support one, and by the time that I put this review up, I'm actually going to probably have it expanded out to all 36 buttons, and um, I'll host it on the Think Computer's website so we can, you know, have the av availability to download it for uh, Heroes of New Earth if you do play that game. Um, because Madcast decided to include this, it really, I think, puts this keyboard beyond the level of the death adder I've seen that Razer's put out. That's the big functionality grabber for the death adder is the fact that you can um, you know, have whatever particular application, League of Legends, Battlefield, and they're dedicated, Battlefield th 2 or 3, um, I'm sorry, not <laughs> Battlefield 3, uh, but you, you have the functionality of, you know, particular um, you know, cues in the game that, that or macros in the game that allow you to do different things um, right here, except the, the LCD screen would be somewhere over here on the death adder. But because Mad Cats leaves it so open-ended for the user to create profiles and host them and share them and, and, and fast switch between them, which is really simple. Like if I'm in one game, I'm switching to another and I want to load up a different profile, I right-click and it shows me all the profiles that I currently have set up for each keyboard. Um, like uh, these ones here were provided by Madcats. I downloaded these from the website just to basically see what they had available, different applications, different games. And I got this Guild Wars 2 from some user-created website. And I can just see the potential for this keyboard's user-generated uh, material to, to exponentially grow. Um, all in all, I think Madcats has a serious product on their hands here when it comes to the profile organization of this particular product. And I think the sky's the limit, especially if the community can get behind something like this. All right. Take care, guys.